Senator Hume. Thank you, Acting Deputy President. I rise today to speak on the Criminal Code and Other Legislation Amendment removing Commonwealth restrictions on Cannabis Bill of 2018. This bill introduced by our colleague Senator Lionhelm, who said at the time that the bill was informed by the principle that adults should be free to make their own choices as long as they do not harm others. As long as they do not harm others, that's a phrase I will come back to. Accordingly, this bill removes offences and civil penalty provisions in the Commonwealth law for dealings with, uh, for dealings with cannabis. The explanatory mem memorandum outlines that the bill would allow any state or territory government to legalise and regulate cannabis, stating that this would address several issues. Uh, the casting of cannabis users who might otherwise be law-abiding uh, might otherwise be law-abiding citizens as criminals, casting them as criminals, and the subsequent pressure on the criminal justice system. Uh, Legalising cannabis is estimated to reduce the annual Commonwealth law enforcement expenditure by $100 million per year and increase GST revenue by $300 million a year. Uh, the explanatory memorandum also states that cannabis use is in fact less harmful than alcohol and tobacco use and that legalising cannabis would improve access to cannabis for recreational, uh, medicinal, industrial and other purposes. According to the explanatory memorandum, for medicinal purposes um, it's, uh, it's currently hamstrung. Uh, use uh, for medicinal purposes is currently hamstrung through excessive regulation. So the effect of the bill would in fact be to amend a number of Commonwealth laws that currently prohibit and control cannabis, and that includes the Criminal Code of 1995, the Criminal Code Regulations of 2002, the Crimes Act, uh, Traffic in Narcotic Drugs and Psychotropic Substance of 1990, the Defence Force Discipline Act of 1982, the Narcotic Drugs Act of 1967 and the Therapeutic Goods Act of 1989. The bill was originally introduced to the Senate in May in 2018 and was immediately referred to committee. Indeed, the Senate Selection of Bills Committee said that as this was the first legislation to propose the removal of Commonwealth restrictions on cannabis, there is a case to examine um, the merits of the legislation itself, the law enforcement issues around it, extradition issues, constitutionality, treaty, uh, treaty issues, trade rule issues, Commonwealth state issues and budget issues. Indeed, the Legal and Constitutional Affairs Committee, of which I am a member, reported to the Senate on the 17th of August with one recommendation and one recommendation only, and that was that the Senate not pass this bill. Um, the bill's proposed amendments to the Narcotic Drugs Act would in fact dismantle the very carefully constructed regulations on the cultivation, production and manufacture of medicinal cannabis introduced to the Narcotic Drugs Act in late 2016. Uh, the effect would be uh, to first leave the matter of cannabis regulation and control almost entirely to the states and territories. Enactment would not in itself legalise cannabis for recreational use, but may in fact lead to the states and territories considering such a move separately of, of their own accord. Individual jurisdictions may also take different approaches to authorising cannabis and cannabis-derived products for medical and scientific use. And second, the proposed amendments to the Narcotics Drug Act would have the potential effects that Australia's cultivation and production of cannabis and manufacture of cannabis products for the medicinal and scientific purposes for both medicinal and scientific purposes would not be compliant with its international treaty obligations as provided for by the single convention without commonwealth uh, regulation consistent with australia's international obligation states and territories providing for cultivation of cannabis for medicinal purposes will affect australia's ability to present itself as um, as a compli as compliant with that single convention and, uh, and in turn, this could have adverse reputational implications for Australia's licit poppy industry with medium term risks to Australia's approved status as a major supplier of poppy straw in a timely and controlled manner. Uh, in addition, this bill is not supported by the AMA, the uh, RACGP, the Pain Australia, the Alcohol Drug Foundation and the West Australian Police Force. I just want to talk very briefly before going into a little bit more detail on that issue um, about uh, the progress and expansion 
of medical cannabis and the use and production of medical cannabis under the Liberal National Government. The Liberal National Government has taken action to assist doctors who believe that their patients may benefit from using medicinal cannabis, including terminally ill patients. We have, under this government, set up uh, a cannabis licensing scheme to allow the cultivation and manufacture of medicinal cannabis products that are safe for use by patients under appropriate medical supervision. And in fact, in February last year, the Minister for Health announced that the government would facilitate faster access by qualified doctors to medicinal cannabis products for patients with the necessary approvals. Under, uh, domestic production meets, um, and, sorry, until domestic production meets local needs, the government will authorise controlled importation by approved providers from approved international sources to enable an interim inventory in Australia. Now, to date, 42 domestic licences have been granted, 19 of those for cultivation of cannabis for medicinal use, 10 for cultivation for research, and 13 for manufacture of medicinal cannabis products, um, and that's as at to 20th of July this year. And patients are also accessing medicinal cannabis products in a very timely manner via the patient pathways that this government has put into place. So far, 1,375 patients have been approved to use prescribed medical cannabis since the 1st of July 2016. So, as you can see, Acting uh, Deputy President, the cultivation and regulation of medical cannabis industry has expanded and developed significantly under this government in a supervised, quality controlled approach to pain relief and other medical applications. The, one of the reasons, well, sorry, and there are numerous reasons why this bill cannot be supported, and they are, as I said, numerous but also varied. Um, the first is increased harm to users, and I think that that's something that was, uh, that was well examined in the um, Legal and Constitutional Affairs Committee report into this legislation. The Department of Health in particular pointed out that there would be potentially increased harm for users with um, the passage of this bill. Uh, they said that while many Australians may view cannabis as harmless, almost a quarter of Australia's drug and alcohol treatment services are being provided to people identifying cannabis as their principal drug of concern. And that's roughly the same number of treatment episodes for amphetamine use. Uh, the cannabis use has been demonstrated to have significant health outcomes, including problems with memory and learning, addiction, decreased motivation and concentration, uh, anxiety and increased risk of respiratory, respiratory um, diseases, paranoia and, in some cases, psychosis. Again, an issue I would like to come back to. The Royal Australian College of GPs submitted that while there were benefits to some patients using med medicinal cannabis, its recreational consumption had very poor outcomes in several ways, um, including the risk of mental health problems and cannabis use disorder. Legalising the recreational use of cannabis can also have significant neg negative impacts on public saf safety issues, especially uh, driver impairment. Um, and work health and safety problems, which have to be carefully considered against the potential benefits that regulating the sale of cannabis might in fact bring. Uh, the Royal Australian College of GPs cautioned against the legalisation of recreational cannabis as it would likely encourage use of a drug that would result in increased demands on the Australian healthcare system. But it's not just increased harm for users. There is also concern that it would exacerbate the health and safety risk for the families and the children of users and for communities more generally. Um, uh, the notion that an illicit drug use is, is victimless is, uh, is, is a victimless crime and that everyone should be free to do exactly what they want with their body disregards the web of social interactions that constitute human existence. Affected by an individual's illicit drug use are children, parents, grandparents, friends, colleagues, uh, work victims of drug drivers, uh, crime victims, elder abuse, sexual victims, patients made sicker by medical, um, by, by medical marijuana. Illicit drug use is no less victimless than is alcoholism. Um, adolescents, of course, too, are a particularly vulnerable group 
um, that uh, during that important period of neurodevelopment where educational achievement is essential in long-term out um, life outcomes are affected, smoking cannabis has been shown to negatively affect attention, memory and learning, and reduced intellectual function can last for days or even weeks after the acute effects of the drugs have worn off. Um, there is also there were some submissions to that inquiry regarding the effects of cannabis use, even moderate can cannabis use, on unborn children. There was data emerging from um, an analysis in Colorado where uh, cannabis use has been legalised that suggested that of all the fastest growing anom anomalies that the overall rate of congenital heart defects and total defects has almost doubled uh, since uh, cannabis was legalised in that US state. Um, the Western Australian Police Force provided some very interesting evidence to the committee that indicated that uh, following cannabis legislation in Colorado, in Colorado youth cannabis use of um, youth use of cannabis had increased around 20 per cent, and that cannabis-related traffic deaths had increased by 48 per cent, and cannabis-related emergency department rates had increased by 49 per cent. These are significant statistics that cannot be overlooked when we're talking about the civil liberties aspect of cannabis use. Um, so the third argument, of course, is that it would seriously compromise Australia's medical uh, cannabis industry, including the removing the um, Commonwealth oversight of quality, availability and market regulation, which would affect medical cannabis users. The department has uh, set out a number of ways in this um, in, this in, the, in their committee uh, submission that, would, uh, that, that the bill would not only negatively affect Australia's domestic medical cannabis regime but also compromise our international treaty commitments and our medical op op uh, medicinal opiate industry. The department said that the act would in fact dr drastically alter the Commonwealth's oversight of our med medicinal cannabis production, manufacture and distribution and the effect would be to first leave the matter of cannabis regulation and control almost entirely to the states and to the territories. Enactment would in fact not legalise cannabis for recreational use but it may lead to the states and territories considering how to do so separately. Individual jurisdictions would also take different approaches to authorising cannabis and cannabis derived products for medical and scientific use. Um, now, while the Australian community expects there to be a, a illicit source of cannabis for medical use, that the bill could theoretically mean that there are no levels of control on the availability of cannabis. For instance, uh, and for example, medicines uh, at the moment they have advertising, they have labelling and packaging and control requirements designed to improve customer safety and manage the um, medical doses. In removing cannabis from the poison standard, cannabis could potentially become unscheduled, and while this is untested in law, it could potentially become a listed complementary medicine. However, listed complementary medicines can only contain certain low-risk ingredients, and some cannabis um, therapeutically active substances would not actually fall into that particular category, and can only make claims such as health maintenance and health en enhancement or for non-serious self-limiting conditions. And as a result, medicines containing cannabis would not be able to be marketed for things like palliative care, uh, for chemotherapy-induced nausea and vomiting, for chronic pain, uh, or for multiple sclerosis and epilepsy, where they can potentially do so much good. Um, they would also potentially contravene Australia's international treaty obligations, compromising our capacity to export medicinal cannabis and undermining the local industry producing and processing poppies to make medicinal opiates for global markets. Um, our growing industry producing medical opiates, which is uh, dependent on Australia's adherence to the UN Single Convention on Narcotic Drugs, uh, could potentially be compromised. I want to touch on this issue of civil liberties because I believe that this argument is a flawed one. The argument that illicit drug use is an unalienable human right uh, rests on the faulty assumption that individual freedoms um, of individual freedom that fails to balance balance freedom with a responsibility to others in the community. Um, and I think this is something that I would like to come back to a little bit in what time I have and what time I have left. Um, the savings to the cost or to law enforcement 
I'm concerned are greatly exaggerated. Also, um, there is some evidence from the Western Australian Police Force that suggested that counterparts in the US Drug Enforcement a Agency have advised that in places where cannabis has been legalised, it has in fact enabled organised crime networks to legitimise their otherwise um, uh, their, their you know, previously illegal cannabis businesses and potentially continue to sell or traffic cannabis on the unregulated black market where it remains cheaper and avoids being subject to tax. Um, there are also potential jurisdictional issues. This is particularly important. What you could find is that cannabis is legal in one state but not in another. The disconnect between Commonwealth state and territory laws would lead to a greater financial impost on state and territory law enforcement. Um, I think, however, the most compelling uh, evidence that was given during the committee phase was that the bill was in fact premature. Um, while a wider debate on cannabis legislation reform was timely, the AMA, for instance, suggested that um, the bill was premature and failed to recognise that efforts to, to decriminalise cannabis may be detrimental to some groups within the population. More nuanced uh, deliberations must occur in relation to the benefits of ending criminal penalties associated with personal cannabis use, as well as the need to better protect the groups of people that are most vulnerable to the um, deleterious uh, um, um, effects of cannabis. The AMA also has significant concerns about the lack of capacity within the drug and alcohol treatment sector in Australia, and many individuals at this stage have difficulty in, assessing, in accessing treatments and the support that they require at the right time. Indeed, the Alcohol and Drug Foundation agreed that with this analysis that the bill was premature and that a decision to consider changing the legal status of cannabis deserves to be undertaken in the context of a critical and comprehensive review of all relevant matters and careful consideration of all options. Questions of drug policy are very complex and involve scientific evidence, medical expertise, fears and volatile emotions and should not be decided in haste. The ADF, um, the Australian Drug and Alcohol, uh, Alcohol and Drug Foundation, believed that a period of extensive community discussion is required that would allow the public and experts from various disciplines and relevant disciplines to voice their views and debate the issues prior to decision being made by policy makers. Uh, Acting Deputy President, in this place it is our primary responsibility. Our primary responsibility is to the next generation. And we must never underestimate the trust that is placed in us by those um, younger than, our, than ourselves, to set an example for them and to do what is right by them. And I, I would ask the Chamber to consider what example it is that we, we are setting today. A Canadian report from September 2018 stated that the, the legalisation of cannabis gave youth a false sense of security. It stated that youth, uh, uh, it could potentially put youth under a misconception that uh, legalisation means safety. And it's amazing. I look around the chamber today and there are a bunch of very young people looking down on us as we have this debate. And I want them to know that when we discuss this stuff, it's because of you. We're trying to do right by you, by the next generation. The report continues on to outline that there is an increased risk of psychosis among youth smoking cannabis, particularly those with a family history of serious mental illness. Um, like schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. Is this the, really the message that we want to send um, to youth, that we support legislation that allows for this? Do we want to say that we support mental illness? The government does not clearly. We, in fact, support measures to combat it at every stage, like our announcement yesterday for increased funding for Headspace. And the facts don't stop here. Uh, there is an article in The Australian not that long ago, in April, last year, sorry, April this year, that found that there are consistent links between can cannabis use and psychotic disorders such as schizophrenia. Um, and this was a report by the New South Wales psychiatrist Matthew Large, New, University of New South Wales psychiatrist Matthew Large, who found that cannabis use was associated with an earlier age onset of psychotic disorders. Um, the ABC News team found that teen, Canada, cannabis is, uh, teen cannabis users are more likely to quit school or to attempt suicide. It's unfathomable that anybody in this place could support a bill that increases the likelihood of teen suicide and youth dropping out of school. The study from Australia and New Zealand combined, a large, um, a combined data on, um, uh, on 3,765 participants who use cannabis frequently before the ages of 17. And the study examined whether teenagers com completed high school, obtained a university degree, were dependent on cannabis, used other illicit drugs, attempted suicide, suffered depression or want, were on welfare. It was indeed an extensive report. Um, 
uh, the study found that teenagers who were daily users of cannabis before the ages of 17 were more than 60 times, 60 per cent less likely to complete high school or obtain a degree and seven times more likely to commit suicide. If we in this place are to fulfil our duty to the next generation, then we cannot pass this bill. Senator Lyon has spoke of the courage to pass the right laws, and that it is rare in this place. Well, the government has the courage to oppose this bill for the sake of generations to come.